Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host. I hope you are staying safe, Khadija. Listen, y'all, I know y'all hearing a lot of crazy stuff about the coronavirus, whether it's real, whether it's fake, um, whether you should wear a mask or whether you shouldn't wear a mask. Uh, what's wrong with being safe? I just don't understand. Um, if the CDC says it's a hoax, uh, I mean, if if the people are saying that it's a hoax and the CDC is saying wear a mask, who are you going to believe? Um, I know there's a lot of politics in, involved, especially when we start talking about Bill Gates and vaccinations and things of that nature. I, I get it. I get it. However, I'd rather have it and don't need it than to need it and don't have it. And you understand what I'm saying? So, I'd rather put a damn mask on my face because I see people dropping dead. I don't know what they're fucking, I mean, excuse me, what they're falling dead and dropping dead for. So, whatever they're dropping dead for, I don't want to be a part of that. So, I try to stay safe. And all I can say to y'all is be safe. Because I want you to hear something. And this article was taken from the Journal Sentinel today, right here in Milwaukee. It's written uh, by uh, Patrick Marley. Six weeks after the Wisconsin Supreme Court threw out the state stay-at-home order, city and county officials are learning that they may have little ability to control the spread of the coronavirus. Y'all hear me? A lawsuit in Racine could determine how much power local officials really have to close bars and gyms and to take other steps to try to contain uh, the pandemic. The lawsuit, which has gone abysmally for Racine officials in its initial stages, comes as health officials raise concerns about the increase in all these damn cases. The Supreme Court in May issued a 4-3 decision that tossed out a statewide stay-at-home order issued by Democratic Governor Tony Evers. The lawsuit was brought on by Republican lawmakers who argued that they should have a say in any state rules meant to contain the virus. Now let me ask y'all something. Is there any situation in your life where whether you're a Republican or a Democrat don't freaking matter? Or are y'all that crazy and stuck on stupid that everything you see is in Republican, Democrat, black, white, no gray areas? And what the? F I mean, this is so stupid. And for people who are pulling guns and walking around with rifles, okay, okay. Daisy, no. People that are doing that. Let me finish reading this article. In winning the case, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss of Rochester and Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald of Juneau said they didn't think that any state rules were needed. Local officials could handle the illness by putting in their own rules, they argued. Indeed, in the hours after the Supreme Court issued its decision, several communities imposed their own orders, many of them mirroring the ones written by Evers, the, the Evers administration. Now, Racine is facing a legal challenge that has led to the suspension of its coronavirus rules, at least for the time being, that is. Racine County Circuit Judge John Erickson said during a two-hour hearing Tuesday that he was likely to issue a new decision in the case by Wednesday. Fredrickson's ruling applied to Racine only, but the case could ultimately reach an appeals court or the Supreme Court, and those courts can issue a decision that are binding on all communities. Milwaukee and Dane County are among the communities that have put limits on how businesses can operate during the pandemic. Milwaukee officials are considering 
requiring people to wear a mask in public. Racine's public health administrator, Dottie K. Browsery, issued a coronavirus order on the day the Supreme Court issued its opinion. Soon afterwards, David Yandel, the owner of Harbor Park CrossFit, sued. Fredrickson in June blocked the city's order saying that Brower Sox was exhibiting deposting power. I mean, really, y'all, I just... In response, the city council passed an ordinance codifying the restrictions on how businesses must operate and explicitly giving browser socks the ability to order businesses to close. The move did not go over well with the judge. He quickly blocked and revived the order, calling it a direct attack on his initial ruling. Going forward, this court warns Brower Sox and the city of Racine that it will not hesitate to issue an order to show cause for contempt if anyone, both or both, the defendants attempts to undermine the orders of this court, he wrote last week. There are no strike two or three in this court. Y'all hear that? During Tuesday's hearing, he said he was likely to uphold many of Racine's coronavirus policies because the city does need to be protected. You think? But he said, though, that he was likely to toss out the city's ruling, limiting gatherings, saying that they appeared to interfere with the right to peacefully assemble, assemble and that's guaranteed in the state's constitution. State's rights, y'all. It's the only part of our Constitution that says, shall never be abridged, he said, of the right to assemble. Democratic Attorney General Josh Call office weighed in on the cases this week on one side, on the side of Racine. Assistant Attorney General Colin Hector argued in a court filing that a Supreme Court decision had little bearing on what local officials could do because the case was focused on how the state rules, not local rules, are written. He noted state law gives local authorities the ability to impose all measures necessary to prevent, suppress, and control communicable diseases. The Supreme Court decision makes it all the more important that local authorities be able to respond to the conditions that they face in their jurisdictions, he wrote. Holding otherwise will be harmful to public health and legally unjustified. Hector continued contended the order effect on the CrossFit business were limited, writing that they would be required to have workers wear gloves while cleaning. No mask though. J Jim's attorney, the Jim's attorney, Anthony Nudo, said his main concern is that the city is trying to give the health administrator carte blanche to put in place any rules as she wants. That would mean that she could close the business or impose er uh, erroneous restrictions with no notice. Or onerous restrictions with no notice, he said. On his face, un face, on his face is very unconstitutional because it's overtly broad. However, the case goes, an appeal is all but certain. He said, "There are the types of cases that go to the Supreme Court, and I believe the people are passionate on both sides of this issue." I always got to find a reason to fight. You already know that, so. I mean, this to me is a no-brainer, but of course, hey, Mayor Corey Mason is concerned, Racine Mayor Corey Mason is concerned about the possibility the courts could limit the powers of the city's health department. And Mason spokesperson Shannon Powell spoke on that. Cases are trending in the right direction in Racine. 
but officials are worried about the national data showing a surge in cases. I mean, we should trust our public officials to make the best decisions possible based on science and not politics. What the hell y'all think about that? Should it be based on science? Or should it be based on politics? Because that's what it seemed like it is to me. Donald Trump don't wear a mask. Everybody else got on the mask. I mean, he tell people to take uh, drugs for lupus. He don't take it serious. Nobody else does. What are we going to do? I'll see y'all in the next video.